Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. I'm going to do an introduction to what we shall be looking at. And the Lord will help us to do exactly what we need to do. The Lord is good and he loves us and we thank him for that. Uh, We're going to be reading the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to verse 12. That's where I want to stop just that because it will uh, give us an impetus of what we're going to be discussing but before we pray and read that portion let me remind us of the things we always do number one share this live uh, feed to as many people as you can on facebook especially uh, so that they watch this video and the lord may speak to them through the words that we are going to be sharing and the Lord will bless you for being an evangelist in that way. Number two, there is a header to this video that gives you a link to a YouTube channel, Rev Online with Reverend Junge. That's our YouTube channel. After this uh, broadcast, go to that uh, channel on uh, YouTube by clicking that link. Go and subscribe. Click the bell icon and choose to be notified whenever we upload any videos. And then you can watch as many as you want. Like them because it helps them to appear occasionally. And then share with as many people as you can. Send the, the, the link to those videos to their WhatsApp, to their Messenger on, on uh, Facebook and to uh, even SMSs. So that when they click, they go there, encourage them to subscribe and to click the bell icon and choose to be notified whenever we put up the videos. And the last thing I want to say is that below the link to the YouTube channel are means and ways that you can stand with this ministry by sending an offering, a love gift or whatever the Lord will guide you to do. As many times as the Lord will tell you once or may, uh, repeatedly and the Lord will bless you for uh, being uh, a preacher through that way also with that said and done let us say a prayer today we are going to do a very short introduction to the topic that we want to be looking in the next few weeks uh, is a topic I promised to look at uh, sometime back when we were doing several things we looked at God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Bibliology. We looked at uh, the doctrine of salvation. We looked at baptism. We looked at the Lord's table. We looked at many doctrines of the Bible. And I'm going to be introducing a topic called angiology and demonology. That is the study of angels and demons to understand how they affect our daily lives. Uh, we, I'm sure you have heard uh, some some topics on deliverance, spiritual warfare, and how spirits in, in interfere and interact with us. Uh, so this is not something new. I'm just going to give it the theological backgrounds and also demystify some things because sometimes we have given the devil too much power that he reigns in our lives so powerfully because we have uh, enabled him, we have allowed him. Uh, and then we have also given the demon so much power, believing they appear in everything. You see a demon in a chair, in food, in what? Uh, and whenever you do that and believe in that, then you give them impetus to do it. And so we are going to look at how you can be healthy and uh, balanced in the things of that nature. With that said and done, let us say a prayer, then read the scripture that I have already said. Uh, Ephesians 6 10 to 12 everlasting father king of glory creator of heaven and earth you God of wonder uh, you God of signs and miracles you God who was who is and who is to come you who created us 
Mighty God our Father, we belong to you, we are yours and we are your subject because you have power over our lives. You are the one who can change and transform our lives. Mighty God our Father, you are the one who holds the key to uh, judgment and punishment even on the last day. And so Lord, we come close to you. You have said that we should seek the Lord while he may be found and we should draw near to him while he is near and lord we believe as we do that we will know who you are we will understand you we will love you we will have a relationship with you we will be known to you just like we know you mighty god our father we thank you because we know you are almighty all powerful there is no power that is above you demons satan even angels none is more powerful than you are almighty god our father and that's why we draw near to you because we know when we are near you and when we know we are defended by you, protected by you and covered by you, Lord, we know that no power on this earth can defeat us and can succeed in our lives, mighty God our Father. And you have told us clearly, mighty God our Father, no weapon uh, that is uh, prepared against us uh, will prosper because we are hidden in you and you are the rock of our salvation. Our names are in your palms. We are hidden in Christ in God. So the devil can't reach us unless we violate uh, that place of safety and fall out and then he can have his way. But with you on our side, who can be against us? We cannot be separated from you, mighty God our Father by trials, temptations, lack, plenty, uh, hunger, or, or being filled and satisfied. We cannot, uh, mighty God our Father, fall away because uh, of losing a job, marriage, family, uh, a loved one. No, 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 no. Because we know that your love is greater. We can't lose that love because of what happens around us. But Lord, we also know that you're well able to deliver us from all evil that may come our way, Almighty God, our Father. And you're well able to defend us, to fight for us, because you're, you're a mighty man of war, mighty man of valor. You are God of hosts. You are Sabaoth. You are uh, the banner of, of our, our victory. Uh, that is... Uh, Jehovah Nisi, you are Jehovah Shama. Yes, Lord, you are our defender, the Lord of hosts, the God who rules and owns the armies of heaven. And it is in you we put our trust. Yes, yeah, so many may trust in, in, in horses and others in chariots, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord because he is our defense and he is our deliverer. We thank you. We honor you, mighty God. Father, I pray for every person watching this evening. Lord, stretch forth your hand and reach the mighty God, our Father, where they are. If they be in the pit, reach them out there, mighty God, our Father. If they need your lifting, Lord, stretch forth your hand and lift them up, O God. Those who need touching, touch them from the, the crowns of their heads, even to the soles of their feet, and clear them of any sicknesses and diseases in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and restore them to health and make them whole, O God, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who lack food, finances, material things that they need for their subsistence and living, mighty God, our Father, stretch forth hand, your hand as Jehovah Jireh and provide for them. For thy word says, gold and silver are yours, mighty God. And cattle on a thousand hill, even cedars of Lebanon are yours. All the precious stones, all the rocks, all the soil, all mighty God our Father, the waters that are there in this world, all the animals, mighty God our Father, and all the humans, the, the souls of great men and even small men are all yours, so mighty God. So order divine help us, O God. Order divine miracles in the lives of your people, O God, and reach them at the points of their needs, O God. Those who need jobs, those who need, mighty God, our Father, promotion in their careers, those who need uh, uh, special uh, um, ideas 
or, or that they can implement either at their workplace or in an investment or in, in a business so that Lord they can begin to have something come their way Lord speak and whisper in their, their ears because you've already promised mighty God our Father that uh, 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 whether we turn to the right or to the left we shall hear a small voice behind our ears saying this is the way walk ye in it you've also told us that we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not in our own understanding in all our ways that we should acknowledge you and you will direct our path you will make our path straight mighty God our Father I pray that you order the steps of your righteous people O God our Father that they may go into those places that are fat into those places where the boundaries fall on good places mighty God our Father in those places where the tents can be expanded O God our Father I pray for peace I pray for restoration I pray for for unity I pray for love I pray for oneness in the families O God our Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and in the relationship Relationships they are in, oh God. And I pray for those who are seeking, mighty God our Father, marriage, family, and all that, Lord, direct their path. Take them to the right people, oh God our Father, and cause them to meet, and cause them to be noticed, and cause them to be favored, and cause them to be uh, uh, displayed by your glory in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. I pray for those who are studying and need wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and counsel and might. That they may do the well in their education, Lord. I pray that your hand will provide for them liberally because that's what you promised you could do in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, O oh God our Father. Lord, as we introduce this topic this evening, Lord, I pray that you will give me uh, the anointing that comes from your Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit will uh, uh, fill me and be over me, mighty God our Father, and will speak the words and the oracles of God that come from the throne and the altar in heaven, that this word may be alive and, 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 and spirit, and those words can can have an impact and change lives, mighty God our Father, some for salvation, others for healing, others for deliverance, others for encouragement, others, mighty God our Father, for rebuke, for teaching, for correction, that those who hear, mighty God our Father, may be thoroughly prepared uh, for all the works of righteousness, uh, uh, for the glory and honor of you, God our Father. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, I honor you and I glorify you. I empty myself of every human doctrine, every demonic doctrine, every false doctrine, every words that are not of yours, O mighty God our Father. Fill me with your own words, O God, for the glory and honor of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, amen and amen and amen. Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome to this uh, evening's broadcast. Uh, I am very happy to be joined by you. Uh, let us study together. Let us grow together. Let us know the word of God together. And you shall be blessed, even as I am blessed. I want to introduce a topic called angelology and demonology that is the study of angels and study of demons beginning with the prince of the demons who is satan or belzebub and uh, we will just talk because i've not prepared any notes i have notes but for the, the subsequent lessons but for the introduction i decided to just come and read a scripture and then share from my heart this is what the word of the Lord says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is the portion I wanted to read. Now, I want to just introduce this topic saying this. We have three kingdoms that are intertwined and those three kingdoms affect our daily living. Two of those kingdoms are spiritual and one is physical or 
the kingdom of the flesh. The kingdom of the flesh is these nations we live in here on earth. We are ruled by men who are kings, emperors, presidents, prime ministers, uh, governors, uh, chancellors, uh, and all types of, of, of those uh, kinds of leaders. Now, these rule the affairs of man. Daniel talks about it. I think it is uh, chapter 10, where God says he's interested in the affairs and the rulership of men. Uh, and, and Romans uh, 13 tells us that all authority here on earth, which is given to men, comes from God. Uh, uh, we have just come from a voting uh, and an election period, which was uh, within the month of August and specifically the 9th, where we were casting our votes. And we are saying votes because you cast six votes to elect a president, a governor, uh, a senator, a woman rep, uh, and we have uh, a, a member of parliament, and then we have uh, a member of county assembly, MCAs. Those are six ballots that we cast, electing six leaders. Now, for the president, we elect a president and a deputy together. These ones are, are connected at the hip. So if the president gets 7,142,000, like uh, uh, our, our, our president, uh, His Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto, uh, we, we elect him with his deputy, uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Gashagwa. There's nobody you can separate them, and and it is it is a very it's a very complicated situation even in the, in the in the constitution. The president can sack the deputy. The deputy can re resign. However, that would uh, would be interpreted in different ways. Some people will interpret it to mean this way: if he resigns, uh, we can't elect another deputy, and therefore. Uh, it's like we have nullified the presidency because it's president and deputy, and that the same thing is 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 done in the U.S. When you elect a president, he comes with his running mate. Uh, others will say, okay, he can resign, and then we can remain with the president without a deputy. Uh, uh, but uh, constitutionally, that is a gray a area. Uh, I'm not talking about governance here on earth. I'm just talking about the kingdom of the earth. Now, we have president of Uganda, Tanzania, uh, US. We have uh, prime minister in England, plus uh, the head of state who is a, the, the queen of the king. Uh, we have prime ministers in several places uh, like uh, Netherlands, and we have another one in Japan. We have all those kinds of people. Australia, they do um, uh, prime minister. Uh, Canada, they do prime minister. Uh, we have kings like uh, Swaziland has a king uh, and several other places. Uh, Ethiopia used to have an emperor, then they went to a president and they went back to a prime minister. And so now they have a prime minister. They have a, a, a ceremonial president, but the prime minister is the head of state. Now, those are the kingdoms of men. They rule over our lives. They affect us in different ways. If you elect a good government, it does good. If you elect a, a bad government, it messes the country, it messes the economy, the security, uh, and all those things, and they affect our daily living. All right? So that is one kingdom that affects our lives. All right? And that kingdom is affected by the two kingdoms. And so one kingdom can make it very bad and diabolical and satanic. The other kingdom can make them righteous and holy and godly. Uh, uh, but they are not exempt from both. So it is for the people to train themselves to discern and to do the things the way they ought to do. So there is the kingdom of the earth. I don't want to explain it further. There are so many systems that they use. Uh, some people have hybrids where you have parliamentary and presidential combined like ours. We have a parliament and we have a presidency. Uh, the prime ministers are mainly 
the parliament the party that has majority that's where the prime minister comes from and so the prime minister does not run per se he is the head of a party and if his party wins more seats in parliament then he becomes the prime minister right uh, but that is the pure parliamentary system and England uses the same even though they have a queen on top or a king uh, that that is how it is US is a presidential system you have a president yes you have the houses you have the, 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 the Congress and the Senate but you have the president he's helped to formulate legislation and bills by the houses uh, Congress and Senate and the decision go between the two houses and then when it is passed it comes to the president for ascending and he becomes a law or a, 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 a principle that governs that nation that's the same thing we do here in Kenya we have parliament we have senate and then those kinds of governments also have a judiciary and these three arms work together they work together now uh, many people say we have uh, we have government which has its own uh, members of parliament and then we have opposition in, in in the constitution of kenya there's nothing like that you have a parliament that has a majority leader and minority leader a deputy majority leader and a deputy minority leader and all of them whether they were running against one party or the other that parliament is a unit it's supposed to work together not to oppose each other but work together to bring out uh, bills and laws that help the people who elected them all right so their work is not to fight the, the president all the three arms are in government but they check each other so that nothing is done outside the constitution nothing is done uh, to discriminate anybody so you have parliament and you have judiciary checking the executive all right as they do their things so that's how that one runs now apart from that the two kingdoms in the spirit world which is the kingdom of light the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god all right uh, kingdom of god influences the world for good it wants fairness justice love forgiveness care love and all those things that's that's what the kingdom of heaven is trying to do it, it is also trying to uh, reach the people to know god to understand god to love god to serve god to worship god that is the kingdom of heaven then you have the kingdom of darkness the kingdom of satan and the kingdom of the god of this earth that is the kingdom of satan all right this kingdom tries to influence the world for evil it doesn't come outrightly all the time as evil sometimes it shows you money causes you to love money then it begins to corrupt you in a way so that you love money beyond caring about anybody you can kill to get the money so all the things do not come as evil it doesn't just bring you the worship of the devil or witchcraft or sorcery or necromancy and and any other form of those kinds of things sometimes it comes in a very subtle way but the aim is to corrupt you the aim is to make you rebellious to the kingdom of god so these two kingdoms are in contention from the inception of the kingdom of darkness because the kingdom of god has always been because god has always existed even before he created angels and the heavenly beings even when god was the only uh, entity before he created the heavens the earth man and all those things the kingdom of god was still there because god has always been there and god has always been a king and god has always been the almighty god the all-powerful god the all-knowing god the ever-present god god is present everywhere including in hell and in the lake of wherever that place is there's no place that exists and i'm not talking about galaxy in the galaxy and beyond the galaxies god 
is present everywhere. So God has always been. And so the kingdom of God has always been. And the kingdom of God uh, was the first to be established because God created the celestial beings, the angels in their ranks, uh, the creatures, because they're creatures. Those creatures are not angels. That's a category by themselves. The four creatures that are near the throne of God, um, all of them were created and they were inducted into the kingdom of God. All right. Um, and while those ones were made, there was no kingdom of darkness because Satan, who was known as Lucifer at that point, existed in the kingdom of God. Now, we shall look at Satan by himself to understand him. But let me just say there are many, there are many things that are said about Lucifer himself. If you go to Isaiah chapter 14, uh, let me not concentrate on the whole of it. Uh, verse 11 to 12 around there. It gives us an idea that Lucifer had pipes and tambrels and those are instruments within himself. So he was musical. He was producing music. And that's why many people make this connotation that he was ahead of the worship in heaven. There's no scripture that says that per se, that he led worship in heaven. But Satan moved with sound. That sound God created him with for a purpose. And the purpose was for God, for God's enjoyment. All right. And that's why people deduce it to say he led worship. Every creature that God has made in heaven and on earth, whether animals or even human beings, in water, under the, the water, in, in the land, and under, were all created to worship God. And that's what we are told in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, um, that he made all these things for his own pleasure. So they were created for for, for, for God's pleasure, uh, even as we were created for that pleasure. And so our worship is pleasure to God. When we love God, when we speak to God, when we pray, when we sing, when we do good to other cre creatures that God made, then we are doing it for the pleasure of God. Hallelujah. So even in heaven, so Satan was created and he was called Lucifer. Uh, we are told that he was a cherub. I think that is in uh, Ezekiel chapter 38. That he was a cherub that covereth. Covereth, when you read in the, in the Hebrew, which was the original uh, script of the book of uh, Ezekiel, means he who watched over the throne of God. So it means it is like Lucifer was so close to God, was standing near God, was covering the throne. Uh, and covering would mean he was like the aide that stands behind the president. Very important person even to God. That is the work of Lucifer. And he was a cherub. And a cherub is, an, is a rank of some angels. You know, they are... They are, they are the funny thing is that he he is also called elsewhere a seraph. Uh, it means he ranked very high. He had angels under his authority. Um, it has been deduced by people again. Uh, scriptures are not so clear, but you begin to piece together some of those scriptures. And they begin to give you a meaning that there are three orders of angels in heaven. The seraphims are the ones we see in Isaiah chapter 6, worshipping God. They have six wings. They're flying. They're crying, holy, holy, holy. Uh, the cherubs are the ones who are sort of uh, the army of heaven. Uh, you remember when man sinned. The cherubims were sent to guard uh, Eden so that man does not return. 
and they had a f there was a flaming sword that was twirling around and there was a cherub on each side of the entrance to the garden so you would you would imagine they are like the wrecker squad the mozart the the top brass of military so to speak so they guard and uh, so those are the fighting angels those are the hosts of heaven those are the ones that can be sent to fight and of course when you read scriptures you will see several times they were released to go and help israel when they were fighting and for instance when joshua was just about to enter jericho it is said that an angel of the lord came he was holding the sword of the lord and joshua asked him are you for us or against us um, we know that uh, sometimes israel would go to fight and they're told not to go and engage just to stand somewhere blow the trumpet or sing and then angels would come and bring confusion in the camp of the enemy and they destroy each other and finish each other uh, we know that uh, before the israelites left egypt an angel was sent and he killed a lot of egyptians those would be those kinds of angels and uh, then there is uh, another order of angels that are called messengers and they are sent to bring uh, uh, a message from God, uh, an instruction from God and when you read the story of the birth of Jesus Christ you see several of that. You see Mary being visited by an angel who identifies himself as Gabriel who tells her that God has chosen her to be the mother of the Son of God. We see another angel visiting uh, Zechariah in the temple while he was performing his priestly duties and tells him he'll have a son. The son will be called John. He'll be a forerunner for the Christ. Uh, we know the story and Zechariah doesn't believe and so he becomes dumb. Uh, we see uh, several other places. We see uh, Samson's mother being visited by an angel while she was working somewhere and she's told she'll have a child who will be a Nazarite, the hair will never be cut. Those are messengers. We see uh, Joseph being visited, uh, being told uh, to take Jesus while he was young and run to Egypt with him and the mother. So those are the messengers. They bring news. They don't come to fight. They just come to tell you what God is saying. So there are those categories now. The worshipping and the serving. And you know worship, worshipping is serving God. is Actually the whole word angel means ministers. And ministers means the ones who serve. And we know Hebrews tell us that are not angels ministering servants. For the saints so they are also sent by God to serve us as saints and we remember uh, some were sent to serve Daniel when he was in the den of, of lion uh, we know others have been sent to different people even you today if you understand angels and their place and God will allow them to serve you and they are here even now but because we don't understand how to interact with them, they only help us where God has allowed them. But when you have an understanding of that interaction, they can do more for you. It doesn't mean they'll build your house or they'll give you money, but they will bring messages from God. They will direct you on certain areas. They will protect you. That's why we talk of guardian angels from dangers that may be laid on your way. And it happens. And some people even living today have heard experiences with angels saving their lives. Either you were in a car, it was going to have an accident and all of a sudden something happened. No one can explain. You did not have that accident. I know of someone who said they were driving in a van and it was in the US. They came 
against uh, a trailer and the other side because the other trailer was overtaking so a trailer avoided this trailer coming and was right in front of the van and driving at very high speeds and these people knew they can't turn this way because they'll hit this trailer they can't turn this way because they'll go off the road and of course they will overturn several times and definitely die so they just closed their eyes and they prayed a prayer jesus save us and then they realize it's taking too long before the other trailer hits them so when they opened the trailer had passed and they were beyond the trailer and they did not know how they went through the trailer without hitting it that can only be an angel i've heard of several people who went to a place in the u.s was driving on the highway and the vehicle was running out of gas and they still had a long way to go and they saw a petrol station and they drove in there a man came out and served them gas they left and went and when they were passing there the next few days they found that place was ghost town that petrol station does not work but that day they passed it was working it had lights it had fuel when they asked questions they were told this gas closed many years ago very many years ago so those those can only be angels so angels now they've said uh the ones who try to decipher this information say that those those three divisions are led by lucifer was leading the the ones who were flying and serving the lord on his throne michael was leading the the cherubs that are the hosts of heaven the fighting angels and gabriel leads the the messengers the ones who bring messengers here on earth and, and in the book of revelation many of those will return but all all the categories will be there if you look you will see that there are some who are sent to punish the earth those who come to to punish the earth must have been the ones who are the hosts of heaven they're the ones who come and blow their trumpet and destroy a third of the earth and stars fall and very many things happen but then we also see angels who come and proclaim the messages of the lord they proclaim jesus christ uh, there's an ark angel that will come and blow a trumpet when jesus returns that must be a category by itself all right now that is one belief by people there's some people who believe there are seven orders of angels and there are seven ark angels all right uh they've added several others including a name like Raphael the angel of healing and I've heard someone say that they, they there was a time they would worship and they would see angels in their services and when those types of angels came healing flew around that place and there's no disease that could not be healed and so they've said those are the angels under the leadership of Raphael and there are many others and uh in one of the lessons as we go by i will look at the seven names that are given of the archangels uh is it true only god can tell us but it is good to have an information of what has been said and what has been revealed and what goes on but we shall look at spiritual realm this spiritual realm controls the physical realm the flesh realm um there are people who do evil not because of their own flesh but because of influence of the fallen angels demons uh, and we shall look at where where we where did the demons come from because you realize from genesis 1 to 6 no mention of spirits and demons it's only god and man god man god man and then from 6 we begin to see evil spirits and the evil spirit came and la 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 so something tells us something happened from chapter 6 going on and something was not happening from chapter 6 going back to 1 where god was creating but when god was creating lucifer had already fallen all right and that's why he talks to the woman in chapter 3 and and convinces her to to eat the fruit now i want to end our introduction right here saying 
the spiritual realm because the three kingdoms are divided into two physical and spiritual realm natural and spiritual or natural and supernatural all right those are the two divisions the supernatural or the spiritual realm affects the natural or the physical realm they can influence what happens they 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 can change the course of things you you you, you if you read the book of judges and especially the story of Samson you see and the spirit of the Lord came down and Samson did all right that means God came down in spirit form and sat on Samson and influenced him to be stronger than normal to destroy an army of enemies to burn their fields to carry their iron gates to push the pillars of their hall and kill 3000 at once you know those are those are not normal happenings um and 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 the kings the book of kings you also see the spirit of the lord came and, uh, and even for the, the the prophets the spirit of the lord came and this person said now we also know that an, an evil spirit came down and entered who soul the king or tortured soul the king and david had to come and sing so this world is affected by the spiritual realm you're the one who gives it the right to do or deny it the right to do unfortunately if you don't choose the side of god the devil takes advantage even if you don't welcome him that that is the saddest part of it Hallelujah. Let us pray and thank the Lord. I think we will begin with angels in general. Then we'll go to the categories. Then we will look at Lucifer and what he does and whether Lucifer is Satan today. Does he still wear the same name? Because Lucifer is the title. And we'll see what the Lord says from there on. Then we'll talk about can a Christian be demon possessed? What is demon possession? What is deliverance? How does it happen? What authority do we have to deal with such things? Those are the things we are going to be looking at in the next few weeks. I want to thank God that we have uh, managed to finish two years of this ministry of teaching the word. Uh, on the 31st of August, we hit two years straight without fail except for the few times our systems have not worked or the internet refused to work and if I count it will be about three times only and then of course we took a break in December during Christmas week uh, but we have done two years of ministry and the Lord has been faithful thank you for being partners thank you for watching and thank you for sharing and thank you for praying and thank you for being there for us god bless you god increase you god do you good god visit you in a very special way god provide for you all that you will need in times of support in terms of material things in terms of finances in terms of health and strength to do the work of your ministry that the lord has called you Hallelujah. Let us pray and then we meet again on Thursday. Heavenly Father, mighty God, King of glory, you who love us and who care about us, we thank you for what you're preparing us to understand. We want to understand the spiritual realm. We want to understand the angels. We want to understand what demons are and what they can do. We want to understand what happened when the angels came down to marry uh, uh, women uh, and what happened uh, with the third that came with Satan and what they are doing right now and where they are right now and how we can defeat them because we have authority because Jesus said I have given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy all the powers of the enemy not some of the powers not a little bit of the powers not almost all but all the powers of the enemy we thank you because we are more than uh, 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 victorious. Uh, we thank you because you are on our side. We thank you because you're fighting for us. We thank you because you are here with us. 
be glorified, be exalted, be lifted up, O God our Father. Pray for every person watching right now that the cover of your Holy Ghost and your goodness will protect the mighty God our Father from any influences of the enemy, every attack, every fight the enemy may take their way for the glory and honor of your name, Almighty God. We thank you, we honor you, we glorify you, we lift your name on high, Almighty God our Father, and we bow before you. For it is in Jesus' name we have prayed, we have believed, we have received. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you very much for watching this broadcast this evening. Let us meet again on Thursday, same time, same place. Bye-bye for now. See you.